Hello, this is Greg from SharePoint Maven. And in this tutorial, I will explain to you how to properly manage permissions on a SharePoint site. Now, when it comes to managing permissions on a site, uh, the first thing that we must do, we must first understand what type of site we have. And the reason for that is because depending on the site type, we manage permissions differently in SharePoint. So the first, the most important thing uh, to set up proper permissions is understand the type of site that you have. So let me explain to you what I mean by that. So uh, let's actually go ahead and try and create a brand new site. So I'm going to uh, navigate to the SharePoint start page and we're going to click create uh, a site. In SharePoint, we have two main site types. We have a communication site and we have a team site. And as I mentioned already, we manage permissions differently. First of all, let me briefly explain to you the difference between a communication site and a team site, and then I'll explain to you how to manage security and permissions on those sites. A communication site is a type of site you would use for one-way communication. I'm actually not going to go ahead and create it. I already have one right here. This is a communication site type. Uh, it's a site, like I said, you would use for one-way communication sharing. An example would be a human resources employee-facing site. Uh, so this is the site where, let's say, HR will manage the information, but everyone will be a visitor, a read-only user uh, on this type of site. When you uh, create a communication site, uh, what you see is what you get. You just get a site and it does not have a left-hand side navigation. Uh, the navigation is on top. And um, there is really nothing connected to the site. It's just a regular site uh, with pages and you can add documents and whatever content you want to add. Again, the primary objective of this type of site is one-way information sharing. The communication site is, uh, again, a type of site uh, that is usually visually appealing and something you would use to share information with others in a one-way fashion. The second type of site uh, that you can create is a team site. And a team site is uh, a type of site you would use for two-way collaboration. Now, when you create a team site, you actually get more than just a team site. Remember, with communication sites, we just get a, a nice looking communication site. With team sites, it actually uh, tells you over here you are getting more than just a team site. Uh, you are getting uh, something called Microsoft 365 Group. And I have uh, the slide for you here so you can better understand what's going on when you create a team site. So when you create a team site in SharePoint, uh, you are getting more than just a site. Uh, you are getting a Microsoft 365 group, which is essentially a security group. It's a membership group. And you're also getting other elements as well. You're getting a group calendar in Outlook. You are getting a distribution list uh, in Outlook for that same group, for the same team. You can also connect a Microsoft team to the group. And you can also connect a plan and planner, a task management component to the group. And the big idea behind this concept is that um, it's all or nothing, all right? So once you create a team site, you are getting all of these other elements. And let's say Mary and I were part of the group, we have access to everything the group has to offer. Uh, whether you use those uh, other applications, uh, it's your call, it's your decision, but you still have them. You still have them. And the security, as you will later find out, is managed here through this Microsoft 365 group membership. Let me now show you what uh, a team site with all of this other components looks like in uh, real life. So here's a team site. I created this team site some time ago. Uh, it's uh, an HR uh, private uh, team site. And you will see how it is different from a communication site. First of all, um, this team site has left-hand side navigation. Remember, communication site with communication sites, it was on top. So we do have this left-hand side navigation. But the most uh, important difference uh, is the fact, it even tells you over here, it says it's a group. You see, it's a group. So this is based on this Microsoft 365 group membership. And uh, Mary and I, we happen to be the members of the group. I'm the owner and Mary is the member. And the idea here is, once again, is that Mary and I, we have access to more than just this team site. Let me show you some other components that uh, got created or the ones I connected uh, later uh, after I created this team site. 
Uh, so first of all, of course, uh, this is a SharePoint site itself. And uh, let me show you, here is a group calendar uh, that got created. You see the one in blue, this is a group calendar that got created when uh, I created this team site. So we have a dedicated calendar for the group for Mary and I to manage events. Uh, this is the plan and planner. You see it says it's a linked plan and you can see the same two people are part of this plan as well, the same membership. And my team site is also connected to a Microsoft Teams. It actually tells you right here. So let's go to the Teams side of it. Again, here is this team that is a Microsoft team that is that is connected to uh, you know that SharePoint uh, team site and Microsoft 365 group. And again, same users, same uh, you know users who are part of the uh, group uh, membership are part of that team as well. And again, the big idea here is that um, you don't need to manage permissions separately on each and every app over here. So it's all or nothing. Once you become the member of this group, of this membership, you have access, you know, same access to everything the group has to offer. A SharePoint team site, a Microsoft team, plan and planner, a distribution list, and a group calendar. Now that we understand the difference between a communication site and a team site, let me show you how uh, we manage permissions on those sites. We will start with a communication site. This is what I have here. So here's a use case. Um, I'm the owner of, let's say I'm the owner of HR department. So I'm the owner of the site and I want uh, Mary, uh, my colleague to help me manage content on the site. And I want everyone else within our organization uh, to be the visitor, right? Read-only users. So the way we manage permissions on the communication side is through the three built-in SharePoint security groups. If you click on site access on the right-hand side, or you can also click gear icon site permissions, doesn't really matter, you're going to see three security groups. And these are the three security groups you really need to care about. Uh, and add people to. Uh, the three security be, uh, groups being the visitors. Uh, these are read-only users. They can only read and download, nothing else. Uh, the next group, uh, site members group. Uh, and essentially what site members can do, they can add, edit, delete content, but not the entire site. All right, uh, whoever's the owner can delete the entire site and manage other aspects of it, but members can add, edit, delete content. So again, I am listed already as the owner of the site. I need to add Mary here into the members group and I need to add everyone else, all my other employees into the visitors group. So let's make it happen. What you want to do is click share site and you're going to type in the name of the user. All right, and this is where you assign the proper permission level. So again, I'm going to assign Mary. Uh, I can choose between three levels, read, edit, or full control, the site owner. So I'm going to make Mary the editor. And here's what will happen. Let's see what just happened. Mary got added into the members group. So Mary can now help me with the content. She cannot delete a site, only I can, but Mary can add, edit, delete content on the site. At the same time, I want everyone to be the visitor, right? After all, this is a communication site, so I want uh, everyone to access the information and read the information. So you're going to click share site. Now, you can obviously type in the names of the users. Uh, if you, if your organization, your IT department maintains some sort of Active Directory groups, you know, security groups for all employees, you can add them here. In case if you don't, just type in everyone. Everyone except external users is a default group that exists and it automatically captures everyone within your organization. So as people come and go and your IT provisions accounts for them, they are part of the group, all right? Uh, and um, yeah, obviously it's just the internal people, no external users, no contractors are in here. They are just the, you know, the internal employees. And again, you can specify the permission level. In our case, we're going to leave it uh, as read-only. Now, don't worry about send an email. Uh, it's smart enough when you choose everyone, right? Because this could be hundreds of users. It never sends an email to them about that. So feel free to uh, uncheck it, I guess, but doesn't really matter. Click add and let's see what just happened. So we pretty much set up the permissions for our site. Uh, I'm still the owner of the site. Mary is the member, so Mary can help me with the content and everyone got added as a visitor. 
so they can uh, read and download uh, anything from our HR site. So uh, what I just showed you right now is how to manage permissions on communication site. Uh, pretty straightforward. Again, remember, utilize those three default groups that you already have. Now let me show you how to manage permissions on a team side. So I'm back on my HR team side. And remember, I actually had Mary here. I actually removed Mary temporarily. We're going to add her back uh, in a second. Um, but I want, do want to start from scratch and show you how to add users to your team site. Now, remember, with team sites, we have more than just a team site. Uh, when I created this team site, uh, I got this Microsoft 365 group, and I also have all these other elements connected. So the way we manage permissions on a team site is different. We do not manage permissions individually on a site and a team and planner and so on. We manage permissions here within the Microsoft 365 group. Why? This way, when I add somebody to the group, they have access to everything the group has to offer. Uh, the, the site itself, the calendar, planner, teams, and so on. So let's go ahead and add Mary uh, as the member of this uh, team site. Uh, so on a team site, do not go here. Do not go gear icon site permissions as we did on a communication site. Instead, you want to click on this members right here. And I'm the only member. I'm actually the owner of this team site at the moment. So I'm going to click add members. And what you want to do is you want to type in the user's name. Now, remember when we set up permissions on the communication site, we had three options, right? Visitors, members, owners. We only have two here. We have member. Members have add, added delete rights to the content. And then we have owners. Owners can tweak you know, the advanced settings. They can delete the entire team if they want to. All right. And they can also invite other members. So that's the big difference. Uh, so pretty much, there, are, yeah, there is no visitor access here, right? You are either part of the team and you have access to add, added delete access to everything or you're not. So let's leave it like that. And after you click Save, you will see that Mary got added to the team. And uh, again, I'm going to show you the slide again. Uh, when I just added Mary, I added Mary to the Microsoft 365 group. So Mary just got access to the SharePoint site, uh, Microsoft team, plan and planner. Uh, she's now part of the distribution list. And she also got access to the group calendar in Outlook. So I just showed you how to set up permissions uh, on a communication site and a team site. As you can see, uh, two different ways of doing so. Uh, let me actually now cover another scenario. And this is a quite common scenario, uh, which I, I find uh, quite popular with uh, uh, my clients. Uh, so here's the uh, deal with this particular scenario. So once again, I have this HR team site, and of course it's connected to Microsoft Teams and Planner and Outlook Calendar. Uh, let's just say I need to invite somebody into this site, but I only literally want them to have access to the site and nothing else. So essentially what I want to do is I want to limit their access just to the site. Uh, I don't want to invite them to the group because they will have access to everything, all our conversations and tasks and events. Uh, the scenario could be uh, maybe we want somebody to have access to the documents right on the site, uh, and we don't want them to see our conversations and teams and uh, anything else that we have as part of the Microsoft 365 group. So um, let's again uh, pretend we are going to add John. John is from finance and he needs to have access just to maybe the documents on our site, nothing else. Obviously, I cannot add John here, right? When I add John as a member, John will have access to everything um, you know, the group has to offer, Teams, Planner, um, Group Calendar, and so on. So here's what you need to do instead. Navigate to the team site. And remember how I told you earlier, do not click gear icon, site permissions. Well, in this particular case, you do need to do that. So let's do that. And you're going to see the same uh, three SharePoint security groups that we saw on a communication site. And uh, what ends up happening here, you will see the Microsoft 365 group membership. You see the way it works is that this Microsoft 365 group, this is it right here. Mary is in here and I am in here because remember I am the owner. All right, so this are automatically kind of created. This is how it appears by default. So essentially, um, just to explain to you how this works, a Microsoft 365 group 
is part, is embedded inside of the SharePoint security groups. So what we are going to do, we are going to bypass the Microsoft 365 group membership, and we are going to add John directly to the site. Here is how you do it. We want John, let's say, to be in here, the visitor. We are going to click this drop down, and you see we now have two options, add members to the group or share site only. Obviously, we do not want this one, right? We don't want John to be part of our group. We are going to choose share site only, and we are going to add John. And it even tells you over here that if we add somebody in here, uh, they are not going to have access to the group resources, you see, like calendar and conversations. Now, because we're adding John directly to the site, right, we're essentially setting up SharePoint security uh, groups here. We now have, once again, those three uh, permission levels, read, edit, and uh, full control. So let's just say we want to uh, John to be the visitor. We're going to add uh, him as uh, a visitor to our uh, site, read only. Click add. Let's see what just happened. So you see, we bypassed the group membership. We added John directly to the site. And John is not a member of our Microsoft 365 group. So John only has access to the site. If John tries to click on a planner or, you know, or calendar and Outlook, uh, he's not going to see any of this other assets because he only got access to the SharePoint site itself. And uh, so John appears here, but uh, again, John, you are not going to see uh, that user in here in the membership. Why? Because again, we did not add John as a member. We added John directly to our site. Now, the last thing I want to show you, uh, just in case if this ever comes up. Uh, so remember how we, um, you know, created or tried to create new sites, and I told you that there are two primary site types. There's a communication site and a team site connected to the group. Well, there is also a third type of site that you might have in SharePoint. Uh, it's actually called also ironically a team site, but a team site not connected to the Microsoft 365 groups. And now this option is only available to SharePoint admins, only your uh, SharePoint admins can create this type of site. And let me quickly show you how that works. I'm going to navigate to SharePoint Admin Center. So I'm now inside of the uh, Microsoft 365 Admin Center. We need the SharePoint Admin Center. And um, here is what your uh, uh, IT folks uh, usually would do. They would click on active sites, create a site. And once again, uh, they're going to be presented with the same choices that you are, a uh, communication site and a team site connected to the group. But there is also another type of site called a team site without a group. So you click here. And uh, ironically, it also says it's a team site, but it actually tells you right here in fine print, this option does not create a group. And essentially what you are getting with that option is just a team site with left-hand side navigation, but nothing else. You're not getting any of these other components at all. And you might need this type of site if you do like the team site look and feel with left-hand side navigation, maybe uh, some sort of external sharing site or maybe some archive site, uh, but you don't really need any uh, of those bells and whistles that come in with the Microsoft 365 group. So uh, let me just uh, create a sample site um, because I do want to show you how to manage permissions on uh, that type of site. So this is it right here. This is what uh, a team site without a group looks like. It actually looks uh, like the, the regular team site. It does have left-hand side navigation, but you're not going to see any group things or membership things in here because there is no group attached. The way you manage permissions on this type of site is the same as managing permissions on communication site. So you would need to click gear icon, site permissions, and essentially you have the same three SharePoint security groups as you do have on the communication side. So I'm not going to repeat the steps now. Um, again, the steps are the same. You just add whoever you want to add as members and visitors. Uh, it's exact same way uh, you manage permissions uh, as you're managing them on a communication uh, site type. Okay, I think that's all I wanted to mention in this video. Hopefully you found it informative and now you have a bit more information on how to properly manage permissions on your SharePoint sites. As always, happy to see you on my blog, sharepointmaven.com, as well as my YouTube channel. Thank you very much. Have a great rest of the day. Goodbye.